Hi, my name is Dave Dogman with Floco Production Solutions. We're going to show you our live well model today that is installed with conventional gas lift mandrels. First thing, a conventional gas lift mandrel is this piece that you see right here. This is commonly installed in most onshore situations in the United States. The heart of a gas lift system is the gas lift valve. The three components, the mandrel, the check valve, which presents backflow from the tubing into the casing, and a gas lift valve. A gas lift valve is loaded with a predetermined amount of pressure in the dome with a nitrogen charge. That dome reacts on the bellows, which causes the valve stem to, seat, to, to sit on a seat. And when we inject casing pressure on a typical gas lift system, you have a compression on surface, which we inject pressure on. That pressure overcomes the pressure on the area on the porch over the bellows in the dome and allows us to inject gas into a natural gas well and allow the well to flow more freely. Gas lift will closely get your well to a natural flowing state than any form of artificial lift. The big components of gas lift system are going to be a compression on surface which is sized based on a data sheet. Our gas lift simulator here is going to show you several things. On the left hand side you're going to see the compression discharge capability. On the right hand side you're going to see the casing pressure. Casing pressure allows us to see pressure drops throughout the system when we're unloading to allow us to see which valve we are operating on. You're going to have your wellhead pressure, which is your flowing tubing pressure or line head, wellhead back pressure, and you want to keep that as low as possible so that we can maintain a differential to adequately unload the well as we move along. In this particular well, we have three unloading valves. Valve number one is set at 600 PSI to open and 580 PSI to close. Valve number two is set at 580 pounds to open, 560 pounds to close. And valve number three is set to open at 560 pounds and close at 300 pounds. Down here, you will see our static bottom hole pressure. As we are alleviating all the hydrostatic pressure on the well, the static bottom hole pressure is going to continue to drop, which will allow the reservoir to pu push more fluid to the near bore reservoir. At that point, you will see a casing drop every time that we transfer between a valve. When you start a gas lift injection system, it's very important to start at a very slow rate so that we do not wash out or destroy or damage a gas lift valve. Once the casing fluid has traveled through this valve, we will start alleviating the hydrostatic weight inside the tubing. As the casing pressure continues, the fluid level continues to decline and our pressures drop, we'll eventually, the top valve will close because of the pressure that's in that dome, and then we will start injecting onto valve number two and so on down to valve number three. At some point during the process, your formation will start to give gas and we'll see formation gas allow the well to start contributing. So we'll go ahead and start that process. I'm going to start fairly slow and inject about 100 MCF. This is simulated pressure. As you can see, gas is entering into the tubing, alleviating the change in the gradient of the fluid, allowing us to unload. Once the casing fluid level drops to this certain point, you will see more gas begin to enter the, the well. As soon as gas starts entering the well, we will see the well begin to unload and continue to go. Our casing, our, our static bottom hole pressure has dropped to 1,000 PSI right now, and you can see that we went from 600 pounds to about 590 pounds on our casing pressure. After the top unloading valves are unloaded, we can go ahead and start injecting a little bit more rate. We're going to take this well to about 300 MCF at this point. As we continue to load at this point, you can see that our static bottom hole pressure is continuing to drop. Right now we are about 920 pounds and our casing pressure is still about 590 pounds. As soon as this casing fluid level drops beneath this mandrel, we will slowly start to see a transfer of the injection gas coming in through valve number two versus valve number three. At this point, we might see the formation start to help out with some gas. That increases the GLR of the well, which has always been official for a gas lift system. Now you might take a moment, and this process in a real live well might take anywhere from a day to several days or a month, depending on the produced fluid that the well is producing at the time. You can see now that we are starting to get fluid entry into valve number two. At this point, valve number three is going to begin to close and all the injection pressure will come from valve number two. 
We are going to continue a bottom hole pressure drop as now we are under 800 pounds and our casing pressure is about 560 pounds. At this point, we will typically start to see the formation, as you can see us generated gas from the formation as we've alleviated all the hydrostatic weight on the well. We can go ahead and bump our injection up to around 400 MCF so that we can maintain a differential at the point of injection and continue to carry out the fluids as they enter the near well bore. Now, depending on the formation, if the gas to liquid ratio continues to increase, at some point you may be able to either eliminate or re greatly reduce the gas injection in the well. Right now we are at 250 PSI. You can see we have 450 pounds of casing pressure. If our formation gas increases even more, you can see that sometimes this causes your casing pressure to rise. That is due to friction entering into the tubing and too much gas being introduced to the system. At this point on a good flowing well, we can shut off the injection gas and see if the well can sustain being a flowing well all on its own. If that is the case, then you can continue to see your well flow out in a mist form and flowing bottom hole pressure is at the lowest possible point at that time and our casing pressure is at 400 PSI. That tells us that we are injecting at the end of tubing and our well is in a free flowing state. You want me to go over if something happens to the system? Huh? Did you mention like what Yeah, I can do that. So don't forget whenever you finish, we have a closing stick. Like, okay. Thank you very much. You're sure. Gas lift is very flexible in the sense that, let's say we got this well flowing and we no longer use the compression. With today's technology and all the horizontal wells that we drill, there's a thing called infill drilling. What that can happen is that means that a, a older producing well can be hit by an offset frack. If that happens, the well bore can be damaged or fluid entry can come on and that changes the GLR of the well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate what happens if we get hit by an offset frack. What we're going to see is we're going to see fluid levels start to rise. We're going to see formation gas start to close off. And you'll see that our bottom hole pressure is going to be, uh, begin to build because of the hydrostatic weight that we have on the well. We are not producing any formation gas and we're going to continue to rise. What we can do at that point with the flexibility of gas lift is we can go ahead and begin injecting gas again and kick the well off no matter the state of the well. Once the well gets kicked off, once the well begins to flow again, you will see that pressure start to resume to normal. We're still not producing any formation gas, but once we start alleviating that fluid, you can see that we're dropping our static bottom hole pressure is beginning to decline and we should start to see formation gas continue to contribute to the well at this point. Once that happens, it's not unusual to continue the well to back to the previous state that it was flowing at. Lower injection gas, more formation gas is growing and the well is going. I hope that you find this presentation helpful. If you have any questions, please contact anybody at Flowco Production Solutions, visit our website and we look forward to hearing from you.